is a celebration here in New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Chargers. Possession of the football going back over to New Orleans now, and the Saints open the 2020 season hosting Tampa Bay for Tom Brady's welcoming reception into the NFC South, and they welcomed him rather rudely. And then they, they were kind of like the Saints at a high-performance engine because they needed a little bit to warm up, but after two touchdowns from their spark plug, Alvin Kamara, they really started to fire on all cylinders, and I think I just got enough cliches in there for a full football season, so I'll show myself out. Oh, you did well. Staccato, man. They just came one after the other. You were on a roll. I love that. But this New Orleans Saints team, they spent the entire offseason hearing about Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, all the additions, Gronk coming to town. And as their star defensive end, Cameron Jordan, said so eloquently, hey, we welcome Tom Brady and Gronk to the NFC South. And we welcome the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'll just be playing for second place. I love that confidence that that New Orleans Saints team possesses. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 there in a New Orleans first down. First well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Snap comes in one. And now Breeze. And it's held in by Jared Cook. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Chargers come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. And he'll drop here to throw. Looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. First down. I enjoy watching Keenan Allen play. Such passion, such drive, such physicality. 104 receptions last year. 1,199 yards, six touchdowns. He's made three straight Pro Bowl appearances. In addition to three straight seasons, over 1,100 yards receiving. I don't know how you rate him, but defensive players, they rate him awfully high. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. The ball carrier. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. On second down, Eckler They're able to push forward for about four down of the 37. Back-to-back -to -back four yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And it's complete, Henry. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 28. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. 
Los Angeles. When Hunter Henry entered the league, people were really looking for him to establish himself as one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Ability to run and catch and make plays in open space. But the biggest obstacle he's had is just staying on the field. Ended up missing all of 2018 due to injury. When he's right, he is one of the better tight ends and better targets in the AFC West. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is, finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down for the touchdown out. Oh, look out. You've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Taylor, a handoff. It's Eckler. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Taylor. how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know, he hated taking the loss there on third down. Badgley able to knock this one through and the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. kickoff duties on the return Deontay Harris and a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30 yard line New Orleans Saints they get ready to set up shop for their second drive they threw an interception the first time they had the football only gave up three points off of that so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome it really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick look I know defensive backs they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more, thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. It's Melvin Ingram on the tackle. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Trying to get to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Michael Davis. They'll take over first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Running on first down, Eckler. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. Taylor, Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four. And it's third down. And 
And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Alex Anzalone coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Fourth down and on is Ty Long to punt. The all-pro Deontay Harris deep for New Orleans. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. That hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent. Just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Sheldon Rankins, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On third down, Taylor. Steps, and he can't find the receiver, and he's blocked down. Davenport. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, a lot for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. They'll contain him to just four, second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he finds Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. Yard line. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. The Sanders has got it complete. That catch good for only a couple. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line the scrimmage, knew that pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. 
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Working with his second and four. To throw is Breeze. Thomas has got it. Complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. First catch for the NFL's leader in receiving yards a year ago. And a first down. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game. And he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the 5-yard line. Now that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up 5 yards, bring up 2nd and 5. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. start penalty and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down now breeze his throw incomplete jared cook his pro bowl tight end was the target but now it'll be third down quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement in this case he just stared the receiver down that allowed for excellent coverage able to knock that one away it's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need 10 yards out of it on third. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Chargers hold tight down near the goal line. The Los Angeles Chargers coming back out here. They are 1-0 on the young season, getting the win at Cincinnati in week one. And, of course, this was the first game without Phillip Rivers in 224 goal-rounds. He had started 224 straight games. You have to go back to New Year's Eve, Charles, of 05 to find the last guy not named Rivers to start for the Chargers, and that was some guy named Breeze. Yeah, Drew Breeze way back then. But this was a tight contest against Cincinnati, 16-13. to Ultimately, though, L.A. finding a way to get the victory. Yeah, and they were able to avoid overtime because, remember, Cincinnati was lined up and kicking a good field goal that would have put it in overtime and it looked like a chip shot and he missed it. But give the Chargers credit. Going on the road, cross country, and last year in one score games, they were 2-9. and nine. So what a great start for them to grit this one out. And now they get their first shot at SoFi Stadium, their home stadium. The next couple of weeks, Kansas City and, of course, Carolina. They come to town for the next two. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys will get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense up the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. I'm going to call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, trying to put together another drive. 
And a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. Okay, this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all I've got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. On second down, Kamara takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Alvin Kamara, the ball carrier. The tackle by Kenneth Murray. A gain of a yard brings up third and ten. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. From midfield, here's Breeze. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. That third down conversion, good for 23. Good catch there by Emmanuel Sanders, and he's exactly who you want in your locker room and who you want on your team. He can integrate into an offense quickly. He joined the San Francisco 49ers in midseason last year and had a huge impact in their run to a Super Bowl. He's a veteran receiver that everyone respects. And yes, he can still play. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Second and 10. Shotgun now for Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. Five yards, now it's third and five. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Now, Breeze again. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. <laughs> Come on, one thing for sure, you know that Michael Thomas is going to be the target on a third down pass, and Drew Brees finds him and keeps this drive moving. Brees to throw again. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Joey Bosa, the pro bowler, in there to get him to the ground. Not only is Joey Bosa a real load off of the edge, but his technical expertise really knocks offensive tackles off balance. 11 and a half sacks last season. His goal each and every year, not just to lead his team, not just to lead the league, but to beat out his own brother, Nick Bosa, who had nine sacks with the San Francisco 49ers in 2019. That second down play nets a minus four. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Well, that's complete to Sanders. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points.
Field goal is all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And he returns this to the 22. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. On first down, it's Taylor. Complete Hunter Henry with the ground. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. That throw into the arms of Allen. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's a game, it's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in, and it makes it hard to defend. The handoff, it's Eckler. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. A fake to Eckler. Now here's Taylor. Steps away. And yeah, he's going to keep it here. The escapability in evidence there is that one. Good for 15 and a first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On the give, this is Eckler. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. The ball carrier. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Now they'll throw with Taylor. Caught by Allen. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Third and two, now Taylor. That's going to be caught. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. Trying to punch it in with Eckler. And he gets halfway there, down to the one-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. On second and goal, Taylor looking in zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the play goal wide out Keenan Allen there, but now it's third and goal. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Now Taylor. 
Got a man. It's Allen for the Charger touchdown. To Keenan Allen. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Chargers have taken the lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here inside of a minute left in the half. Does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Second and 11. From the gun, it's Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Camara. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. An extra cornerback now in the game for the Chargers here on third. Breeze now to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. Six yards on the booth. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Final play of the half. It's Taylor on the move to his left. And some room to work. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. 
And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some sick. Taylor hit. He lost the football. We talk a lot about setting the tone to start the game. Well, you want to start the tone right in the third quarter as well and nearly lost a football there in their first drive. And sometimes we overdo it when we talk about halftime adjustments and what teams are going to do. Most of the time, it's just a matter of executing the game plan you brought in. But I'll guarantee you, they didn't draw that play up on the whiteboard at halftime. They're fortunate to retain possession. And yeah, not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So it would appear they will not be able to add to their lead on this opening drive of the second half. Yeah, if another touchdown was scored there, now we're talking about a two-score game, and they're probably on their way of creating an excellent gap between them and their pursuers. But how about the defense there able to step up and keep themselves in this one? His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense just came up with a stop right out of the locker room, and now can the offense take advantage? Yeah, we don't want to turn this into something that it's not. It's only a one-score game, so it's not exactly a crucial possession. But at the same time, they'd like to get things started and at least come away with three points. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. I have to think a major focus at a halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Thomas, the intended target, and it's third down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 36 yards. That's an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Ball at the 26, second and seven. They run it again with Kamara. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The ball carrier. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. No gain on the play. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 14. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. First and 10. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. 
That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. He gets it to Thomas. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A gain of six there on first. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the eight-yard line. Ball on the eight, it's second and four. It's a jet sweep, Sanders. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Will Lotz on for the point after. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. That ties the game at 10. taken about a yard deep and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. LA readies for its next possession and their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. Taylor and the Chargers come up first and ten at their own 24. He'll hand off here to Eckler. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. 30, it's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. To throw on second and six, Taylor. He was looking for his tight end, Hunter Henry. And it'll bring up third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. From the 37, they work on second and six. And this pass finds its way to Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a first down on a gain of 10. When I watched Mike Williams play receiver at Clemson, one of the things I was drawn to is toughness. This is a guy who took some big-time hits out in the field as the number one receiver and kept finding ways to make plays. And finally, it's paid off for him because in 2019, had his first 1,000-yard season in the NFL and averaged over 20 yards per catch. They'll contain him to just four, second down. 
So they still get the completion even though the blitz was on. But the blitz got there. Does that stay in the mind of the quarterback the next couple plays? That's what you're hoping for. That's what you're planning for. It's a little risk-reward, right? You're leaving your guys on an island back there in man coverage. But you take the chance that you get to the quarterback. And so he gets completion here. Congratulations. Keep coming at him. And hopefully it pays off by the end of the game that you're starting to get to him while still able to cover on the back end. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now this one over the middle and into the hands of his tight end complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. And now he'll tuck it and run. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Three yards remain for second down. Here's Taylor to throw. On the screen, this is Eckler. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. He would pick up a five yards. First down, L.A. With Melvin Gordon moving on to Denver, Austin Eckler is officially the Chargers' number one option at the running back position. Gordon spent a lot of time holding out last year. Eckler took full advantage with a breakout season. 92 receptions, 993 yards, and eight touchdowns. He was in the top 10 in the league in receptions, receiving touchdowns, and all-purpose yards. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now, there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. He'll get this to Eckler. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On third down, Taylor. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the 9-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. It is good. That will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because they did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. the kickoff duties. Here's Harris to return it. 
A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. All right, CD, I want to fit in your preseason predictions here. This is now our fifth year together in the booth. Hard to believe time flies, but it's an annual tradition that you tell us how you think things are going to shape up in each conference. Let's start with your thoughts on the AFC. All right, let's start in the East. I like the Bills. In the South, I like Indianapolis despite their loss on opening day. In the North, I like Baltimore. And out West, of course, I like Kansas City. For wild cards, I like the Chargers coming out of the West. I think that in the East, New England is going to get the nod. And then out of the North, I'm taking Pittsburgh. Remember, we got that extra team in the playoffs this year. And then when the playoffs break down, I do think it's going to come down to Baltimore and Kansas City in the AFC. And Baltimore, by a nose, goes to the Super Bowl. And just to be different from you, I like your conference championship matchup. I'll take Mahomes and the Chiefs heading back to the Super Bowl yet again. And the 46-yard line. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Breeze now on first down. This is complete to Michael Thomas. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Brees now on first down. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Jerry Tillery, what an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Shotgun now for Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Camara. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? And his kick is absolutely perfect. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. When you talk about clutch, that one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing in a pin from the fairway, trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. 
And this will make it into the end zone. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Taylor and the Chargers come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And that's into the hands of Eckler. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. He felt the pressure coming there. That was a good job of just making something out of nothing, so to speak. Yeah, took the hit and still made the play. You know, when we talk about runners, all right, and on running plays, runs after contact, we call that getting dirty yards, tough, gritty ones. To me, that's like the version of a dirty pass. He knows he's going to get smacked, yet still delivers the football and picks up good yardage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And the Saints pressure gets him. One down for a sack. Give the sack to David Onyemata, the product of Nigeria by way of Canada. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. How does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here? Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. And this one complete to Smith. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I'll tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Breeze. And this one incomplete. Third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly and unports the incompletion. The Saints on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This time it's third and three. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he's taken down at the 43, but now the fourth picking up the first. As a result, the drive continues. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first down, Breeze. He's got Smith here, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now, Breeze again. It's caught by Sanders. Given nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. 
They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. That's caught, it's Thomas. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball is tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It's a six-yard loss on the play, and it'll be second and goal. That's an excellent stop right there here in this tie game. They're doing their best to hold the fort and at least force a field goal attempt. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Again, it's Murray. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starting in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Touchback. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Taylor and the Chargers come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. Stepping up. He's going to keep it. They'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Five yards remain on second down. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable. Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Taylor. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. A good position to be in here, second and inches. 
A fake to Eckler. Now here's Taylor. That's a loss of eight yards there to bring up third. The tackle made back at the 37-yard line. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Now Taylor. He can run for it, and he will. He's got a first down of inside at midfield. And he'll take this down to the 40-yard line. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. First down now, but that clock rolling. Taylor to throw. He's got Allen. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It's Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. play fake. Here's Taylor. He's going to take off with it. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. Well, to me, this leads to the question, do you admire the way he puts his body out there all the time, or do you think he should protect himself a little bit more? <laughs> well, he's been on the ground several times with all those sacks that he's taken. So, I don't know, I kind of admire him not sliding down there, don't you? I'm with you on that one. The meter definitely leans towards admiration. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period.
Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. A pretty big opening there on first down. Eight yards up to the 33. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now Breeze. Airing it out deep for Smith. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas finding the end zone on the game's final play so this one a victory here for new orleans and it wasn't really always pretty they had their bumps and bruises really both sides did but they did what they needed to do at home to get the win yeah they really had to grind this one out didn't they because nothing came easy every snap was a major league brawl they had to win at the line of scrimmage win downfield they got all those things accomplished but to win a close one like this you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.